Bienvenidos al ¿Qué dicho podcast? El dicho de este episodio es... Echando a perder se aprende. Este es el podcast donde hablamos de los dichos que crecimos escuchando en nuestros hogares mexicanos. A ver, empezando pues. Echando a perder se, ap se aprende, Alejandro. Uh -huh. ¿Qué es lo que piensas cuando escuchas ese dicho? Para mí, cuando lo escuché, se me vino en la cabeza que es una frase que se usa para motivar. De acuerdo. Uh, I'm trying so hard to speak Spanish. <laughs> wow, that was, that was pretty hard, guys. <laughs> de acuerdo. Ok, sí. Yo estoy muy de acuerdo, Alejandro. Yeah, yeah no. We were trying to do full Spanish right now, but... Oh my es God. Es que no, no me sale todo completo así poder hablar español, pero poco a poco. Yeah. Some words are... De like, if you get caught up in one word... Ahí te quedas, pero... Yeah, pero we're trying to flow. Uh -huh. So, continuando con el dicho... Echando a perder se, se aprende. Que la traducción es... You learn by trial and error. You learn by trial and error, correct. Well, okay, yes. I mean, that's not the exact translation, that's the message. Okay, right. But the translation means by spoiling, you learn. Okay, yeah. I would I would switch spoiling with um, messing up. Okay, I just picture like food, I don't know. For that dicho. Right, because that word um, in Spanish, spoil or echando a perder, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't... Doesn't the, always mean the, food. Doesn't always mean food, Pero para correct. Mí, sí, no sé por qué. And for English, spoiling, it's strictly mm, food? No, because you can spoil a surprise. Oh, okay. So oh, so it's kind of used the same way then. Huh. Spoiling. Yeah, I guess so. But I haven't... That will... Yeah, I've heard that one, spoiling a surprise. But yeah, don't spoil the surprise. Mm -hmm. Ruining it, which is the basis of this dicho, yeah. which is by ruining things, mm -hmm. you learn. Say that again. By... L <laughs> <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. All right. Yeah. Say that again. By ruining things, you learn. It put, it's like a, a message that pushes you. It's a it's a pushing message. It's a pusher. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's from Mean Girls. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I don't like, know the reference, but... Oh, oh. if you know, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Let's give the definition that... Vamos a usar la definición que nos da... Uh, lo que nos deja saber la definición mm -hmm. o cuando se usa este dicho. ¿Nos puedes dar un ejemplo? Ok, por ejemplo, queriendo hacer una comida por vez primera. Por primera vez. You flip it in Spanish. No, vez primera es... Por, por vez... primera vez. No, por vez primera. That's how you would say it in English. No, say it in English, how I said it. Por vez primera. <laughs> say it. Say it. For, for the... <laughs> For the first time? When you try something for the first oh, time. <laughs> no, no, no. You said that I said it wrong. Uh -huh. Por vez primera. It's, you, you're saying that it's supposed to be said por primera vez. Uh -huh. But I think you can also say por vez primera. <laughs> no, no, no. Because what are you trying to say in English? What is that translating to in exact words? In exact words, yes. Pero en español no se usa esa... ¿Cómo se, no? no? No se forma la oración así. No lo dices así. How come I've heard it before like that? ¿Quién lo ha dicho? Mexicans. ¿Por vez primera? Uh -huh. No, yo no he escuchado eso, baby. Ok, say it in English then. En inglés es for the first time. Ok, no, but I'm not saying for the first time in English. What's vez in English? First. Vez? <laughs> what's vez? No, it, that's, that's, okay, that's what? what's confusing me. Ok, actually, cause exactly, because how do you say Spider-Man in Spanish? El hombre araña. Sí, no dices araña hombre. Ok, pero en esta ocasión... It's the same thing. Por primera vez. Ajá. You're going to make me have to Google this, Alejandro. Thanks a lot. Right, we'll Hold come on. back. In Give the, me a minute. We'll, we'll clip into the point where Alondra finds out that she's a no sabo. And there's exhibit A right here, guys. <laughs> You're going to eat your words, Alejandro. No es cierto. It's just that I have never heard it like that. Okay, according to Dr. Google, 
This is what it says. ¿Qué dice? En, está en español. Está en español. <risa> <risa> se, si se prescinde del artículo cuando la expresión de orden va precedida de la preposición por, ejemplo, por primera vez, por última vez, etc. Y no por la primera vez, or, y no por la última vez, etc. Como se hace a veces por influjo de otras lenguas, como el francés, el inglés o el italiano. ¿Qué dijo? No lo entendí, so Google no nos pudo explicar en español. Pero um, lo único que yo estoy tratando de expresar es de que no se escucha bien. I swear it's a thing. I swear to you. ¿Por vez primera? Por vez primera ver, hice comida, ¿verdad? Hola, por favor, ¿me podrían aclarar si es correcto decir por vez primera o solo se puede decir por primera vez? Ambas formas son correctas. Pero note que los adjetivos numerales, cardinales y ordinales, por regla general, van antepuesto al sustantivo. De aquí que la expresión más común sea por primera vez. That's it. <laughs> Dude, this is not giving me nothing. I know. It's confusing me even more. You know what? I'm going to talk to my parents later and we'll see. Your parents don't know either. Yes, they do. I'll talk to my tío Godo. No, pero... Right, anyways, okay. So, por ejemplo, ese dicho me pone a pensar el, en una situación como cuando haces comida por primera vez y lo intentas o tienes la receta, lo que sea, y pues no te sale. Algo sabe mal o no tienes los ingredientes suficientes y aprendiste y lo hiciste, pero, o sea, te salió mal. En fin, aprendiste algo. ¿Sí o no? Correcto. En cómo no hacer... Como no regarla. Ajá, no, o sea, <risa> si ya la regaste una vez, de esa manera, ya, sa ya sabes de no hacerlo así. Ajá, exactamente. Y... Pero, al... a lo mejor, no es, eso no quiere decir que lo sabes hacer perfecto todavía. No, no, no. Nada más aprendiste es como no hacerlo. Ajá. Que es mejor a no saber nada. So, es por eso que de mi... De mi cuando escuché este dicho, me dio a entender eso. Es de que es para aprender de los errores. Uh -huh. Es un dicho que se trajo o que se formuló en cuando la estás regando o cuando vas a estar haciendo algo. Y de los errores es que vas a aprender. Porque no tienes a alguien que te está enseñando la manera correcta de hacerlo... Tú solo estás experimentando y estás viendo los resultados a base de tus experimentos o tú tu, tu tratar de hacer algo. Y te va dando los errores. Y vas aprendiendo. So, este dicho es muy cierto. Two thumbs up de qué dicho. <risa> sí. We approve this message. <risa> so, ese es el, el significado mm -hmm. simple. So, ahora, nos vamos a seguir al siguiente punto que vamos a compartir lo que sentimos, lo que aprendimos y cómo nos hizo sentir. No. <risa> Wrong. Vamos Wrong. a hacer, yo lo digo. Tú lo vamos dices. a hacer lo ah, vamos a compartir lo que sentimos cuando escuchamos este dicho, lo que aprendimos de este dicho y cómo lo aplicamos a nuestra vida. Correcto. No sé sí. qué dije yo. <risa> Y se dejó la Esto es lo que dije. Ok, lo que sentí, the first thing I felt, the emotion that I got from this dicho, or like, I guess you could say my first idea, mi, lo que me imaginé de este dicho es, lo que acabo de decir es como que algo motivational, algo motivo, mot, motivi, motiva, para motivarte. <ríe> ¿Cómo se dice motivational en, inglés, en español? Para motivar. No, pero motivational. Motivis motivación. <risa> Motivacional. Motivacional. Bueno, pues. <risa> eh, que te da... Que, <risa> algo para que... Eches... Motivación. Motivación. Ya sé cómo decir motivation. Ajá. I don't, say, I don't know how to say motivational. Bueno, el punto es que lo que pensé, lo que sentí es eso. Que, oh, este es un dicho que te 
te da ánimos o te es un recuerdo para motivarte para que le eches ganas aunque no te salga bien. So es siento que es un motivational message. ¿Y tú qué tú, tú qué es lo que sentiste de este dicho? I pretty much already said it in the in the intro um at the beginning of this episode, but let me rephrase it. Um what I felt what this um dicho gives us is a form of you got to make mistakes to move ahead and it kind of encourage encourage you to go and try things you don't know so it made me feel like this is something that i would say exactly at the moment that i mess something up mm -hmm. like it'll, it'll, it'll make me recognize or bring me to that realization that hey i know you just messed up but it's okay but it's okay don't Don't get too bothered mm -hmm. by the mess up. Everybody messes up. So I felt like it's it's a it's something that you can use to to get your morale up, to continue going. It's so, okay that you messed up, but continue on. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Like yeah. this does just because you messed up, just because you failed, doesn't mean that you should give up. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough. It doesn't mean that you're not smart enough. It doesn't mean that you're not talented enough. Sigue le echando le ganas porque echando a perder se aprende. Right. And so yeah, that's that's how that dicho made me feel. It gives me reassurance that it's just the way that it is when it comes to things that you don't know. Okay. So, yes, moving on to the second part which Alondra will start us up. ¿Qué es lo que aprendiste de este dicho? Okay, so lo que yo aprendí de este dicho es que You gotta keep on trying. Like, don't be afraid to start something because you're scared to fail. Okay? So, that project that you want to start, that business that you want to start, that fitness journey that you want to begin, what other ejemplos, um, that language you want to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> o sea, todo eso, that school you want to go to, All of those things that you want to do, but the the possibility of failure will always be there. Don't let that be a reason that you're not going to start. So, lo que yo aprendí es eso que do not be afraid to start something new for fear of failure. Like, don't let failure be the reason that you're not starting what you really want to do. Because that's ridiculous. Because you will fail at many things in life. And only because you failed, you become better. And why shouldn't you be afraid of failing? Because you learn from your mistakes. Like this, it's this is a good dicho, honestly, and it's a dicho that I really feel like um, resonates with us <laughs> in many ways. It's a very popular dicho, mm -hmm. and it is um, for highly mo highly motivated individuals, which applies. To us and to many of y'all. It applies to you. And it applies to you. And you. you. So whoever's listening out there, this dicho is for you. You know exactly what you got to work on. You know exactly your own dreams, your projects, and your goals. Hey, it's the new year, 2024, and now is a perfect time to start taking on your goals, like taking on those tasks. Perfect timing, and it couldn't have come in a better time of the year than at the beginning of the year because this is where like this is uh this around that time when a lot of the lot new of year resolutions are mm -hmm. starting to uh get uh messed up or uh when all the new year resolutions start getting uh spoiled and uh, you're starting to mess up on your goals and stuff but this is a perfect time To reassure you that by making those mistakes is that you're going to learn how not to do certain ways that certain things that you've done and that you need to recalibrate. So what did you learn? So it's a time to reflect mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. So like if you're trying to work out early, 
mm-hmm. in the morning and you set your alarm you're like all right i'm gonna do this before i go to work i got this and it comes to the moment that your alarm is ringing and for w- some reason or some or whatever reason you don't wake up in time you're like you know what i'm just gonna get ready for work and i'll call it a day you know e don't feel like que lo echaste a perder your opportunity you can go work out in the evening you can go work out after work you can go work out in between your classes i don't know what your schedule is but that solo echando a perder vas a aprender and so with that maybe you can go to sleep earlier next time and then you wake up early right this is a message for me (laughs) (laughs) she's talking to herself to her own Yes. Her own future self, because believe it or not, guys, we've rewatched some of our uh, podcast episodes. Oh, yeah. And like the message still hits us. Like if like we did the we did the podcast so that like future us could be like, that's all that that I just said and research and, and said in a message it's was so for true. future future me type of thing. And like, uh. Yeah, so whatever we're saying here, one day we're gonna be like, "Oh, remember when? Remember when we did that podcast?" And like, it's motivating us now in the future. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's this is for future Alondra. Let me know where you at at the end of twenty twenty four. Message in the comments, <laughs> future Alondra, in like <laughs> two years or one year or whatever, a couple of yeah. months. Yeah, um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to say is that if this is a detail that your parents have told you this is around this is the messaging that they were trying to portray to you with this detail and like if you're like me i when i heard this detail from my parents it just like flew over my head and i didn't even know what i I thought they were making fun of me they're like uh echando a perder se, se aprende and i'm just like over here like not understanding because it's so encrypted you were the little cat meme huh I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Echa no perder, se aprende. Like, yo no aprendí nada. And like, mm. not understanding, mm-hmm. right? But that's why we're doing this. This is why this exists. Yeah, because we're trying to get that context to those dichos. In case, in case the, there, was that, there was that scenario where you heard the dicho but you never heard the explanation of what it means or you got like a basic understanding mm-hmm. of it right but like if you think about it if you start thinking about the dicho you could get some type of understanding which is good because then if you do that then you're like us that likes to go deep into the dichos to uncover the deeper meanings of it real quick what i learned from this dicho when I started doing a, a little bit of more deep search and more deeper deep search, damn deep search research, deep search exactly. Um, so I found out that this dicho can be used as a beginner when you're barely beginning. It's like a form of a project. Or like, what do you mean, beginning? What? So if you're the individual, right? Mm-hmm. This dicho can be said. Or be said by the beginner in beginning individual who's trying to do a project, right? Okay. Like, el que va a empezar un proyecto, se le da el consejo de, hey, vas a empezar este proyecto, pero irá echando a perder las cosas se aprende. So, mantén tu cabeza enfocada y, este, y los errores, pues vas a ir aprendiendo de ahí, mm-hmm. the beginner. It can be said to the person that has already started and it's in the middle of the projects or the doing of something. And then you do a in, in the present. So you do an immediate mistake and then you you mess up. And in that moment, este dicho se puede decir en ese momento para recordarte. Oh, it's OK. No es un gran problema porque los mistakes se aprende. Nada más tengo que ver a ver qué hice mal. Deja arreglo esta situación. Turn the fire down or turn off the fire of the situation of the project and then move move forward right because you're gonna move forward anyways and one is you can move forward quitting or you can analyze and assess the little situation puedes ver la situación y puedes arreglarlo verdad o aprender y también aprendí que se puede usar para el futuro la persona que ya lo logró 
y que ya obtuvo lo que tenía que ob obtener y puede usar y puede reflexionar que, que eh, cómo es que él llegó a ese lugar o cómo es que, que obtuvo lo que, lo que tiene. Como por ejemplo alguien que tiene uh, mil subscribers en YouTube. Uh -huh. ¿Cómo lo hizo? Hoy oh, entonces esa persona puede decir, pues de mis errores fui aprendiendo que a causa de los errores es que estoy aquí. Y entonces porque uh, echando a perder se aprende. So, es por eso que llegué a mi meta. Sí, o sea, de seguro ese youtuber, digamos, empezó sabiendo nada, obviamente, uh -huh. y nomás se aventó. Y muchos videos al principio, por seguro, no pegó. Este, he cringed at him y los quitó. Um, aprendió probably quality, editing, all of these tools that he learned along the way. Hello, learning. Right. Aprender se aprende. Y aprender se aprende. <laughs> ok, Alonso. Aprendiendo se aprende, guys. Get it. Let's add that on the list of dichos. <laughs> yeah. I forgot what I was saying. Um, so, obviamente, ese successful YouTuber solo porque echó a perder muchas cosas, llegó a ese nivel. Correcto. Eso es un dicho que él se puede decir como consejo a alguien que le... Ay, ¿cómo llegaste a donde estás? Uh, Ejemplo, ok, yo tengo un ejemplo de nosotros otra vez. Oh, ok. El proyecto de qué he dicho. O sea, todo. El, the existence of qué he dicho. Mm -hmm. It's purely, it only exists. This right here, what you're hearing, what you're watching, our channel, our past videos, our logo, our room, our vision. It only exists because we failed so many times at our dream. Right. Because this was nothing what we had initially started with. <laughs> Esto no era nada lo que empezamos en nuestro proyecto en 2017. Right. And even individually, us in Alone. our own little project, uh -huh. like we had a vision of what we wanted to do, but we never imagined. It would become this. It would become and this. I'm not saying that this is like the big, the hot shit. This is the best of the best. This is great. But it's better than where we started. Pero, I'm pretty proud of where we o sea, are right where now. Where we are right now is amazing compared to where we began. Even last year, this time last year, que dicho was just an idea. Right. It was, it was bitten. It was being written down on journals, yeah. on little sticky notes. It was being... Because we went back to the drawing board. Yeah. Because we had just failed years, o sea, 2022. To right. 2022 we had failed let, let me let me give context on that we had it had already failed many months ago yeah but finally on like december we pulled the plug <laughs> yeah we're like right. you know what right. este proyecto esta visión que tenemos no nos sirvió no nos funcionó para nosotros yo sé que para muchos sí les funciona y eso mm -hmm. está bien good for them but for us it just wasn't the time it wasn't the moment and we kept trying to make AL Squared, for those who don't know. <laughs> AL Squared, our little project work, y no se pudo. O sea, so like, como yeah. dice Alejandro, we had to scratch it all the way off. Like, completely erase it from the drawing board. Y nos dolió. <laughs> yeah, um, when it comes to the project, but the the thing is that, that for the way that we can also see it, mm -hmm. is that that project, the AL Squared project that we had previously, was the stepping stone, the mess up, to get us to the this level. The many mess ups, and I'm not saying that it's embarrassing. It's not. I'm. I'm. It is what it is. We mm -hmm. tried and we failed, but it was a lot of mess ups, little things that we would never imagine if we hadn't started. Right. I. I would. I would attribute to that one to be like. Uh. Like as a whole, it will be like a major, big, like stepping stone mess up stepping stone in the form of like a, a mess up but Big because fail. we ruin porque le echamos a perder ese proyecto es que uh, aprendimos mucho que hacer y no hacer para empezar este otro proyecto ahora empezando este proyecto también en en, en, el, en la visión y en, en los proyectitos pequeños para llegarlo a este punto hubo muchos Errores también. O sea, no nos libramos de hacer errores. 
los errores que hicimos en el pasado, pues ahí se quedaron como stepping stone para formar los otros errores que íbamos a, a formar acá. Uh -huh. so, nunca nos libramos de errores. Y esa es la cosa que entendimos, desde que siempre va a haber... O oh, eso es lo que me gustaría expresar también, que siempre va a haber errores. Uh -huh. Siempre va a haber una lección. Siempre. There's always going to be a learning lesson in something that you mess up on, or you fail at, or you decide to let go. I don't know, like... Let me give you this. It just came to me right now. I mean... Do you think that that's the way que Diosito enseña? Do I think that the way God teaches me or teaches you is through lessons? Through mistakes. Through mistakes. Through trial and error. Or through okay, through so the mistakes of lives. Dichos son dichos sabios, right? Sabiduría. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Bible talks a lot about sabiduría. And the only way to become a wise person or be sabio or sabiduría is listening to to i guess the messages that god gives you in life right right and those messages can come through as people as relationships as illnesses as um blessings and yes i do think that god does teach you lessons through failures Because in every single thing that you just mentioned, all of those examples can be Blessings. mistakes. Mistake. A blessing in disguise. Have you heard of that thing? Have you heard of that saying? No. A blessing in disguise. Oh, okay. Yes. See, yes, so, yes. see how you said a mistake and I said a blessing? Yeah. So we're both right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, but uh, it's, it's the perspective mm -hmm. that you see it with which which it's we and it's that's crazy. so cool that we got the same vibe and at the same time we gave it and like as we said it we said it as like it was the same thing you said blessing i said mistake but, and then and but the the thing is that it's the same thing yeah we, we just labeled it that way but in reality it's like you can see it it's the same label this thing that happened it's a blessing And it's a mistake, but it's, but it's all a present all together. Yes, because a mistake that you make in life will only push you to, a di to the right direction you're meant to be. Hopefully. And that's the thing. A blessing in disguise is that you don't see it yet until you're in an outside perspective. And you look back and you're like, that relationship that I wanted to work out so bad and it didn't was a... A blessing in disguise because it brought me to my husband for example okay right all right guys um so we just gave the lo que aprendimos ahora vamos a compartir how do we apply it to our lives i will be going first on this one um so como lo aplico a mi vida so la manera que yo planeo de como aplicar este dicho a mi vida sería de que, bueno, obviamente usando la lección que nos está enseñando, la básica, que es en, en True Mistakes es como aprendemos. So, la manera que yo lo aplicaría a mi vida es haciendo más mistakes. Porque básicamente me estoy diciendo a mí, quiero aprender más en el futuro. So, la manera que yo lo aplicaría es enfocarme en hacer más proyectos o tener más proyectos para tener más mess ups y así aprender mucho más. Probablemente esa sería un mistake, pero vamos a ver si eso trabaja, ¿verdad? Porque a lo mejor es no enfoca en un proyecto o algo así, no sé. O well, maybe a lo mejor no es un tantos proyectos a la misma vez, pero en el span of your life, how many projects did you try to make? How many projects did you fail at? How many projects did you learn from? So that's good. That's a great mindset. You have like, como se dice, el mindset of a student in life, a student of life. Right. I've Just heard you say that before a long time ago, a long time ago. You're like, I'm a student of life. 
I'm like, oh, oh that's, okay, that's right. A good yeah. one. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> That was probably when I was trying to impress you or something. Oh, you know. impressed me. <laughs> okay, there we go. Got her. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> Alejandro had that written down in his palm of his hand, hoping to say it right. I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, pero sí, that, that's a good one. Yeah, so that, así es como yo la aplicaría en mi vida. Y um, si pudiera dar otra de cómo aplicaría este dicho... Um, a lo mejor, si este dicho... Bueno, es que sí, sí me está impactando mucho este dicho. Pero la cosa es como... A eso me dedico. A buscar dichos. Uh -huh. Todo dicho me aplica. Todo dicho me, me enseña algo. Pero si este dicho es uno de los que a ustedes les llega... Yo daría el advice de escribirlo. Escribirlo en su journal. Escribirlo en su... En su carro, en, en, en donde trabajan, tenerlo ahí en uh -huh. su computadora en un sticky note. Que haciendo mistakes para... A, haciendo errores se aprende. Oh, no. Echando a perder. Echando a perder se aprende. De, como recordatorio de que hay que, hay, que empuja, hay, hay que aventarnos. Hay que hacer esas cosas que dijimos que íbamos a hacer. Y saber que va a haber errores, pero de ahí vas a aprender. So, mm -hmm. esa es la otra que yo yeah, like conectaría. Yeah, like motivate yourself right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, ¿cómo lo aplico en mi vida? Um, tengo un ejemplo donde una maestra en el colegio, un maestro, un, un profesor de mi colegio, I went to art school y nos dijo este, una frase que I connected to this dicho now. And I've told you this one many times before. And we've used that phrase that my professor told me many times before, even for this project. So, la frase que me dijo mi profesor en ese tiempo fue que tu primer idea siempre va a ser la peor idea. <laughs> okay, let me say, say it. that again, please, say that for again. the people in the back. Your first idea will always be the worst idea. Okay. Okay, but that that doesn't I'm not talking about like the person you marry or none of that. It's not like that. Like <laughs> Right. Yeah. It Okay, for context, it was in graphic design and um it was for you know, your first idea when you start sketching up, cuando empiezas a dibujar tus ideas para hacer el final project, your rough draft, digamos. Ahí es donde avientas todo lo que piensas, todo lo que quieres, todo lo que te imaginas en un proyecto y casi siempre esa, esa visión que tienes de la, de la first idea. I don't know how to say it in Spanish. Idea. De la, de la primera idea. De la primera idea. It might sound cool. It might look awesome. It might make sense. But take a moment. Get more ideas going. Because it's almost always the worst idea. Or the most obvious one too. Right. Or the most common idea. Okay. So. En, en ese ejemplo. Lo, lo, ese, ese dicho que me, me dijo el, my professor. I use that outside of art. Sometimes as well. Like in our personal projects. And. It kind of reflects the same meaning of. Echando a perder se aprende. Porque solo por tratar de escribir tus ideas y todo eso en tu cuaderno, in, in your sketchbook, you're going to see and realize that maybe that first idea that I really wanted to work out wasn't the best. And I only knew that. And I only learned that because I went through the, mo the motions of writing more and more or of drawing more or of new projects that you tried out, you know? And... Solo porque lo intentaste, solo porque lo visualizaste, solo porque empezaste ese proyecto y viste, you know what, this small business isn't for me. Or, you know what, a mí no me gustó este gimnasio. Or, I don't like CrossFit. I learned that I don't like CrossFit after paying $600. I don't like CrossFit, but I tried it, but mm -hmm. I know now. Next time they invite me, I'm like, hell no. <laughs> yeah, o sea, solo... And so the point is that your first idea is almost always the worst idea. But it, but it shouldn't re deter you to try it and work it out. Yeah. Right? 
to see how where it goes and then when you have enough information you can be like okay that was this that one's was a way mess better up, or uh-huh. this is like that wouldn't have worked exactly so it's just kind of funny how something that my professor said a long time ago art related still really does inspire a lot of my thoughts and a lot of my projects here now and it also kind of goes hand in hand with echando perder se aprende and so with that knowledge of both the dicho and the guys the professor's advice i've become a more more in tune with my designs when it comes to work because a lot most of the time when it comes to designing because we do graphic design and things like that for our small business in the Muslim studio I'm the main designer here and it's only one person so it's not like other people's ideas are coming to mind other people are kind of like tell me oh you could do this or oh, try that so it's a lot of uh sketching and redoing and resizing and researching and going over and over and then I can see slowly how the first concept probably isn't as well made as the final concept And the thing is that I didn't stick to the first concept because I knew already that this is just the first concept. No más lo voy a inventar aquí y aprender de esto. Aprender de lo que, a ver qué me gusta, lo que no me gusta y le hago los changes, los tweaks. Y al fin, it's going to be a better version of that first sketch. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. Así es como lo aplicas en tu vida. Un ejemplo, ya. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. ¿Hay más ejemplos? Si le busco. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want more Your examples? makeup, maybe? Do you apply it there, too? Because uh, you started with a uh, style, and then throughout the time that I've met you, you've had... I've had so many makeup styles. <laughs> like, there, there's... N- I don't think I do my, sa- my makeup the same every day. That's oh, okay. the thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, ahorita hemos compartido cómo lo aplicamos a nuestra vida. Pero ahora vamos a tomar un tiempo para tratar de ir mucho más hondo. Más profundo. Más profundo. Yeah. Ir mucho más profundo. Let's go deep. Let's do it. Deep, deeper, and try okay. to uncover what this so dicho this, tells us. I want to cut you off right now because I'm getting the spark. Uh, this dicho is really a motivational um, phrase. And definitely use it whenever you feel like, man, when you feel down or like you, maybe you're too hard on yourself, like for whatever reason you feel like you're not good enough for your projects, whatever that may be, your personal goals, because you failed at something and you're like, man, I'm, it's not meant for me, but you really want it to be, then go for it again. Try again. Find where you messed up and fix that little mess up, tweak it a little and see how it goes. It won't be perfect. And that's the thing. Also remember that Echando a perder se aprende. No, echando a perder lo haces perfecto the next time. That's not the dicho. Whoa, yeah. Okay. It's very important that you make that distinction. Mm-hmm. Muy importante que hagan esa distinción. Ándale. <laughs> en, en este dicho, de, o, o lo que trata de decir en esta parte, se aprende. Ahorita estaba pensando mm-hmm. que nos hemos enfocado mucho en motivación pero para todo también hay un poquito donde puede ser lo negativo verdad lo, lo que lo que a lo mejor se puede aprender de lo que no hacer esto es parte de, de no hacer mm-hmm. verdad pero necesitamos hablarlo. Mucha gente puede usar este dicho, lo puede usar erróneamente. 
incorrectly. They can use it incorrectly to have a perspective of when you mess up and you do not take accountability of your mess up. Mm -hmm. You can use this dicho to just clear yourself of that error. Mm -hmm. Como like... Te like, lavas las manos. Así. Te lavas ah, las manos de... Eh, echando a perder se aprende. And then you just made a huge error over there. And like, you don't, you're not claiming it. Okay. But you're just using the dicho to kind of like say, eh, hice errores y todo, pero, pero I'm not willing to actually accept. I'm not willing to actually accept the responsibilities that come with the error of trying to learn. Learn from those mistakes. Right? You're just using the first part of the like, eh, eh, echando a perder y ahí te quedas. O sea, y dices, piensas que echando a perder es parte de la vida. That's eh, uh -huh. all you picture. That's sí. all you focus on. Mm -hmm. Exactamente. Which is true, but don't forget the second part. Exactly. What's, which is? Se aprende. Necesitas usar el error para ver qué es lo que puedes aprender o lo que esta situación, este error te está dando de entender that you lack something. Mm -hmm. You lack something in you in your abilities, thus, you are messing up. And it is your responsibility to aprender. Take notes. It's your. It's up to you if you want to learn what that mistake was. It's up to you if you want to hold yourself accountable. It's up to you if you want to do better for yourself. Right. Let me just say that. Everybody loves those type of people that they learn from their mistakes. Mm-hmm. They like, they like hanging out with those people. They like having them as a co-worker. They like having them as a um, business partner because of the nature of the dicho or the nature of that, that belief of like they learn from the mistakes. They might be, they started out in the a company here messing up as a newbie like everybody else. But boy, you should have seen him like within three months, he rose He was messing up uh, a lot of stuff, but like he was learning and then and, and, um, that encouraged me to like even give him even more tips, mm -hmm. like advices of how to do properly. And, and those were just enough for him to feel comfortable to go ahead and learn the next step of of the of the um, the corporate ladder or the the, the positions that he can have, because now now he's in a position where he has more responsibilities. And he got there because he was trying. He was doing them. He was he was failing, failing, messing up. And he wasn't afraid of doing it. Exactly. So so those people are very likable. You yes. want people like that in your team. You want people who are able to to work with that idea. Yes, because it's true. Echando pero desaprende, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go through that. You can learn. Se aprende de tus amigos, se aprende de tus papás, se aprende de un libro, se aprende de un podcast. No solamente puedes aprender de tus propias mess ups. You can learn from the people around you. And that's why the people around you really influence you. I'm burning up in here. <laughs> Whoa, girl, that's deep. That's, in, yeah. that's getting deep there because... We were just talking about the personal experience of you messing up. Mm -hmm. But other people mess up too. All the time. And they learn from their mistakes, which can be shared. Yep. To the... To, to the, the newbies. To the newbies, to the community, to the people who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. And if you hang out with the people who lack or don't <gasps> focus on that learning from mistakes so echando a perder echando a perder se aprende de gente around you pero también se aprende echarse a perder hijo de <laughs> girl si ¿Sí o no si ¿Sí o no se aprende a echarse a perder o sea depending say that on again the... because I forgot how I said it <laughs> rewind it for me uh, pero si sí, o sea también o sea you can learn from people's mistakes You, puedes aprender de, la, de los errores de otras personas, pero también puedes aprender a echarte a perder como la otra persona a tu lado. Right. You can learn 
to spoil the same way somebody else is ruining themselves because you are in proximity and the advice is that they're they're learning yeah. their mistakes they didn't fix them mm -hmm. so they're only teaching you the 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 mess up yeah the hey, first I do this. part yeah um, i've tried this and i messed up in this but, but i quite the, didn't figure out the lesson in it but i did it anyways you should do it too yeah like, do it Ooh. it's fun or fun. do it it's or else we'll kick you out at <laughs> Or else we'll, right. we'll jump you. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of examples. But yeah, so same thing as the people you, you talk to, you can learn from them. And you can learn good things from them. You can learn bad things from them. All right, Alondra. So where do we take this right now? What are we... So in conclusion... Uh, oh, okay. So are okay. we concluding... We're, we're getting towards the end of the podcast. Okay. We're, we're ending it on a high note, I would say. Um definitely i would tell everybody that life is about making mistakes and it's about learning from your mistakes so don't don't be scared to put yourself out there at all like please please believe in yourself that and know that things will happen know that you will fail at certain things in life it's part of life like If you don't fail at things, I don't think you're really living to your potential. Right. You're staying in a cocoon. So mm -hmm. and that's what we don't want. You're yeah. You're, you're, you're not taking action. Exactly. Right? You're staying where it's like, if you done a little, some, you got to a point where like you made some mistakes, you, you saw that like, oh man, I screwed up in a lot of things and it got me here, which is a little bit better than down there so i'm gonna stay here mm -hmm. but that in that little comfortable zone where like you're not you're not attempting to do more mistakes down or up your your, your journey of your life you just don't want to do that you don't want to stay on that one platform and not attempt to do more because the essence of life or the the secret of life mm -hmm. is To go out there and try your ideas, your goals, your dreams, your your visions, so that you can do mistakes that will teach you the lessons you need to learn to, to get you to those goals. Yeah. And it, like, don't let your life be your nine to five. Don't let your life just be where you work like when we say go for your goals it could literally be anything it could be going out to eat by yourself for your social anxiety it could hmm. literally be starting a new book it could be stretching every morning it, it's the little things and even if it's a small little goal you will fail some days you will fail at some certain parts of your goal but that's just going to teach you It's just going to give you tools for the next level. The reason those ideas and those goals come to you is because they're giving you the next checkpoint that you need to go and attempt to reach. And and going to that checkpoint means that you're going to have to go into the wild of life, into the wild in, west. <laughs> yeah. And, and down there is where you, you, you want to have mistakes. those tools. You want to have those tools from your past mistakes. Well, you have, yeah. So wherever you reached in your life, you've gotten some tools. And then because you're in that situation, looking forward, there's ideas and goals that come to you, which which those are your next checkpoints that you are trying to reach. So to get to that next level, you need to start heading down there. And on the way, there's going to be things that are going to be teaching you things that you need to learn to be able to achieve and sustain that goal right because all that stuff just is letting you know that hey we're preparing you i'm preparing you like like the 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 world god the universe is preparing you so you can be able to stand on that next checkpoint mm -hmm. where you have already need to have the skills that you're gonna learn on the way and it's gonna it's gonna test you <laughs> exactly life is full of tests 
and you only get your tools by the fails that you have accomplished <laughs> the fails you've encountered there, there's other ways which we've talked about that like outside yeah yeah you get them from outside perspective meaning someone someone else's mistakes are are also tools are tools that you can get for yourself mm -hmm. they can use them but you will still run you will still run into the situations that you will need to use those tools the thing is that those people lived it mm -hmm. and got that tool and is giving you the is giving you the picture the dictionary of of the tool right and maybe it gives you a rough draft of like what the tool is but when you're encountering that same situation you're dealing with you you at least know that you're supposed to be using this tool it doesn't know it doesn't mean you know how to use it properly okay and that's where like you you will still go you will still have to go and do it and learn and learn by your new mistakes and thus helping you get to that goal so the people the the tools that you get from other people only work at to only work solo te ayudan hasta un punto y después de ahí necesitas tú usar esas herramientas y ver que tú puedes aprender que te va a ayudar a ti solamente a llegar a ese punto mm -hmm. si lo que dije <laughs> went over your head It's okay. Eh, It's the lesson. Es entendible. Eh. Ajá. Probablemente van a tener que ver este episodio unas dos o tres veces. Porque sí, es mucha información que les acabamos de dar. <risa> mucha motivación. Uh, ojalá que ese es, es el ese es el vibe que les dimos. Yes. Ese es lo que... Uh, la energía que le dimos, le transmitimos la información. Y, y con eso... Ya terminamos este podcast. Ok, ya, yeah, yo creo que sí es perfectamente, yeah. es un momento perfecto para terminar este episodio so, de ¿Qué dicho? Muchas gracias a todos por escuchar. Thank you guys for tuning in. We hope that you guys have used this dicho in this coming year, 2024. Don't forget to make mistakes and learn from them too. Muchas gracias por haber visto este episodio todo, all the way hasta el final. No se olviden de darnos un like. Suscribirse. Y en los comentarios déjenos saber sus perspectivas de cómo los hizo sentir este dicho. Qué aprendieron de este dicho y cómo van a aplicar este dicho oh, en yes. sus vidas. Muchas gracias a todos. Yo soy Alondra Lubiano. Y yo soy Alejandro Lubiano. Y esto fue... ¿Qué dicho? Episodio Echando, Echando a perder, perder se, se aprende. aprende.